We're joined by a, a great panel here tonight to honor the life of Coach Phil Albert. We've got Jay Robinson, who was a triple dipper with Coach A. He played for him. He was an assistant coach for him. And when Jay was the head coach at Calvert Hall, Coach Albert was an assistant for Jay. We have Pete Schlair, sports information director for almost every year that Coach Albert was the head coach. Rich Bader, who was with Coach Albert from the beginning. And Gordy Combs, who, like Jay Robinson, of course, a triple dipper with Coach A, was an, a player for Coach Albert, was an assistant for Coach Albert, and then Coach Albert came back and was offensive coordinator for Gordy late in Gordy's head coaching career. Gentlemen, I wish we were meeting under better circumstances. Jay, I want to start with you because I think this is the most interesting of all the group, and that is how did Coach Albert end up coming back to be an assistant coach with you at Calvert Hall High School? Coach Albert's a football coach, you know. He, he didn't care if he's uh, – um where he was or who he was coaching. He just wanted to be around uh, young men and uh, get them to be competitive and get them. Uh, uh, he wanted to touch people's lives. And I offered him a chance to coach us up, get our offense better and um, be around young men that he can impact positively. And it was a win, win, win. Everybody came out a, a better man for being around coach Albert, certainly myself, the players enjoyed it, and I'd like to believe Coach Albert enjoyed it too. Make no mistake, you know, he, he enjoys uh, um, uh, being around young men and making positive impacts. But, but guess what? He, he likes winning too. He was, he was a competitor, and we all know that, and uh, we're better for it. Pete, as sports information director, you know, Coach A was, was certainly not one to, to talk in a lot of cliches. Uh, I'm, I'm sure – with you having him deal with the media, it was, it was probably an easy job. Well, it was. And, uh, I mean, Coach never missed a, a post-game press conference. Came close. In 1980, we were just talking about this. We went to Morgan. And uh, Gordy and Rich and Jay are going to remember this. Uh -huh. So we're at Morgan, and we're beating Morgan 10-7. to 7. And We just stopped them inside the five-yard line, taking the ball over and uh, there was a fumble on the, <clears throat> on the exchange. Morgan recovered, punched it in, and they win 14 to 10. So after the game, I'm grabbing coach. And I said, coach, come on, we got a couple minutes and we got to go up to this post game. He says, Pete, I can't do it. He says, that's, that's, that's absolutely the worst loss I've ever suffered. He said, I can't do it. I said, let's just take a minute. And uh, he prayed a little bit. And then uh, we went into the post game and he was fine. But he was, he was a media favorite. He was, he would, uh, he never backed down from a, a press conference and uh, made all those uh, Monday luncheons and uh, the, the media really liked it. Rich, you were with Coach Albert for a long, long time. And uh, when you first met him, what, what was it that, that said to you yourself, you know, maybe I could have a long-term relationship with this guy? Well, I, I actually, I met him when I interviewed with Coach Runk for the, uh, for the uh, job, uh, for a job there, I should say. And, uh, you know, it, he was, I didn't know what to make of him at that point, but uh, as I got to know him, you know, more and more, and, and, and uh, he's just, you know, he, it was, it, I, I never questioned it. I never worried about it. I, I just, I just knew that if I did my job to the best of my ability, Phil would, uh, uh, you know, would always be there for me and always have my back as I would always have his, uh, as I was with Coach Runk, Coach, uh, Coach Albert, and of course with Gordy. Um, you know, that, that loyalty of an assistant is real important. But, you know, Phil, there was never any, I never, I never worried about it. I, I, I just did my job. And if I, again, if, if I ever worried about Phil or, or thought second, you know, of course we all second guess what we did here, what we did. I never second guess him obviously on what he did offensively. He, you know, he, he, he was pretty good. And we run, a, we won a lot of football games. You know, he, he helped straighten that program right out real quick after one year. And, you know, then we go 74, 10 and 0, then we're in the stag bowl in 76. And then uh, we proceed into division two and, so forth and so on, but it was, again, I never, I never worried about <clears throat> Coach 
you know, that, that he never was there for me. He, he, he fought for both myself and Gordy. I mean, he's the one who fought, got his full-time jobs there, to be honest with you. Gordy, for you, you were his first captain as a player um, and, and then spent a long time as his assistant coach and eventually defensive coordinator. Uh, what was it that, that uh, made you stick around for so long with Coach A and then bring him back as offensive coordinator when you were the head coach? First of all, me, Richie, and Jay were awfully cheap. We, we, we didn't take much in salaries, whether no. we were a part-time <laughs> or full-time guys. You know, so uh, and and nobody else took us. So you know, we we had we we had a home, and we we really enjoyed it. And the thing that Coach Albert always say, you have to enjoy where you are instead of looking for the next job. He said, the next job will come if you do a good job at your current job. And you know, that's kind of. I mean, I never realized that I would be at Towson for as long as I was. You know, the 19 years as an assistant and 17 years as the head coach, and. Now uh, working with you, Spiro, on Saturdays, but it, it was a great place, you know. And uh, I always say I couldn't have had a better apprenticeship if I went gone to big time schools with big time name coaches. I had a great apprenticeship under Phil. Back to you, Jay, and, and I'm going to ask all of you guys um, as we're running short on time, Jay. What, when you think of Phil Albert, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Uh, a caring friend. And as I said earlier, uh, a competitor. You know, he, he, uh, he brought the uh, competitive gene out of all of us. I mean, if you're involved in competitive sports, especially football, you're a competitor. But uh, he, he uh, brought it to the surface without kicking our, us in the ass. He brought it to the service with motivating us intrinsically. He talked about intrinsic motivation instead of extrinsic motivation. He got the best out of us coaches and got the best out of the players. And um, it was always just a pleasant atmosphere to be around. And, you know, unless we lost and it was Sunday, it wasn't always that pleasant, but it was a good place to be. Loved it. Pete, for you, first thing that comes to your mind when you think of Coach A? Positive attitude. Coach always accepted responsibility for anything that happened. And uh, he never once privately to me or certainly publicly pointed the finger at somebody and said, if so-and-so hadn't done that job, we'd have we won the game. You know, he accepted full responsibility and uh, always very positive, always very positive. Rich? Great. Just a man of great integrity. Um, his word was his bond. If he says he was going to do something, he was going to do it. And, uh, you know, uh, I never, never once doubted that. I, I, like all these guys have said before, I mean, you actually believed, you know, you bought into it because you believed in him and you believed that we could accomplish anything we set our minds to. And that, that was probably the, the most important thing I took away from it. I, I've just been reading off all the kids, their comments, uh, kids, players, ex-players and everything. It's amazing to have, to a person, they all say they're a better person today because of Phil Albert and, and the influence he had on them. So, and the integrity he brought to the, to the game. Gordy? He knew how to peep, treat people. You know, he knew when you needed a foot, you know where, and he knew when you needed an arm around your shoulder. And that was probably the most important thing, whether, whether it was when I was a player, even when he was an assistant or when he was the head coach. And when I was the uh, defensive coordinator as an assistant, or, and even when, you know, he would be uh, somebody I, I could talk to when I was the head coach, you know, I mean, it, during my uh, last couple of years, you know, we were initially, you know, before he took on being on our staff, he was, we were all in the Towson Center, so I would see him a lot of times, you know. So, it was, you know, he was going to teach class or I was going doing something for the football program. And, you know, we would talk. And, you know, I, I always used to say when I got in a difficult situation, I would say, what would Coach A do in this situation? And that's how I made a lot of decisions as the head coach. Gentlemen, I certainly wish we could meet under better circumstances, and I hope we do soon. Thank you all very much.